I'm Liz DuPlessis, the Instructional Designer in Distance Education at Santa Rosa Junior College. In Part 3 of our three-part video series, Teaching Through Discussion Forums, SRJC faculty Jessica Harris shares how she uses a reading apprenticeship strategy to support self-reflection in her online class, Introduction to Information Literacy. First, she shows her instructions and resources for a Canvas discussion called Researching on the Web. Then she explains how to use a strategy called evidence interpretation for collaborative knowledge construction. She also shows how she interacts with students in the discussion to acknowledge their contributions and provide direction. Here's Jessica. We're discussing issues with researching on the web, um, and then I'd like them to reply to a classmate's observations, right? And so the first thing I'm having them do is to read, watch, or listen um, to one of these five sources, okay? And so there are a couple of things going on here. One, we could think about this, you know, because we're doing the auditory, right? We're doing the, the visual, we're doing the text. So, you know, classically, you know, we might think of this, we're addressing learning styles, right? And again, we're creating that diverse community, right? That leads to really effective social knowledge construction, right? And these lines of thought that might develop, right? When we have all these different viewpoints coming in. Um, and so we think of it as in learning styles, but I also would like to point out here is that we're providing students with choice. And this is something um, that's really critical in terms of sustaining interactions, high quality, high, high quality interactions, is that students feel that they're in control of what they're doing, right? And so they have stories here and podcast videos that they can choose from. And so again, you can see this format is the same as the other instruction or uh, discussion boards. Um, and so this discussion board is employing um, a reading apprenticeship technique. Okay, and reading apprenticeship is learning how to really um, analyze a text. It's about the metacognitive process, thinking about your thinking, right? Because students a lot of times will encounter a text or even a math problem, you could say, or a map, right? And they're thinking, I don't even know how to begin to approach this. This looks like gobbledygook to me, right? And so how can we help or support students to read one of these articles or watch these videos and really deeply think about this, analyze it, right? And so reading apprenticeship is about self-reflection, right? And if we can get students to self-reflect first, that's going to lead to more meaningful interactions with other students next, right? Okay, so as we look at, um, I'm asking them, the first thing they need to do is identify and share at least one quote or passage. So yes, that's right, I'm saying copy and paste one passage. And this is from a classic kind of log from reading apprenticeship called evidence interpretation. And so I'm asking students, choose one quote or passage, right? And then tell me, why did that quote interest you? What was your connection, right? What did it make you wonder about, right? Because there's a reason why you chose that quote and not another quote. And this helps students self-reflect and kind of develop those analytical skills, right? And so they post their quote, and then I ask them to reply to a classmate who selected a different source than themselves, right? So again, we're getting that interaction of diverse viewpoints, diverse interests, right? So perhaps I selected an article, but I'm going to respond to someone else who selected a video, right? And so then we're not just talking about content, but we're also talking about modes of content. We're getting students of different learning styles to communicate with one another. Um, and again, all of these diverse um, viewpoints lead to that, you know, collaborative, right, social knowledge construction. That's what we're aiming for, this cognitive development, right, different lines of thinking. So here we have the first student um, who has posted her quote, 
right? And what she's thinking about, um, how she self-reflected on this. And as an instructor then, right, to do that coaching part, I'm going to respond to her so that students understand what is it that I'm looking for, right? Because we're now we're getting into that we want students to have a conversation online that's productive, that promotes cognitive development, but they don't necessarily know how to do that, so let's show them. I, I respond to this student, um, and I use the same reading apprenticeship technique. I'm looking at her post, and I say that this student has made a number of powerful statements, I think. So let me tell you the statements in particular that I really liked and then let me reflect on why I liked them and then what I'm thinking about that, right, in response, right? Because remember, there's a response I've asked them to do is offer a new insight, an alternate perspective, or ask a question, right? So very directed in terms of the response I want you to give, right? I want you, because we're looking to promote, right, develop that cognitive or promote that cognitive development, but we need to give them direction on how to do that. And so the first thing I'm letting students know, what am I doing first? I'm acknowledging the value of what this other person has said. I'm listening to you, I see this, I hear it, right? And then I'm responding instead of just jumping in and reacting, which essentially means we're really reacting to ourselves. And we want to show and demonstrate to students that you need to react, not just, you know, give your own observations, but build on the observations of others. For resources that inform Jessica's teaching strategies, see her reading list at this URL. Thanks for watching.